This video is sponsored by Dubby Jitterless Energy Blend. Click on the link in the description and use the code PACKERMAN to save 10% on any order. You know, <clears throat> when I first started this show, it kind of got me thinking. You know, I've covered some twisters that were considered some of the deadliest to ever happen. Of course, the very first episode uh, was about the Waco, Texas tornado from 1953, which was an F5 tornado, and it ended up being the deadliest tornado in Texas history. And it kind of got me thinking. I live in the state of Ohio. What was the deadliest Ohio tornado in history? The answer surprised me because it was not the one I was thinking of. No, believe it or not, for this tornado, we have to go all the way back to 1924. Mm-hmm. Nearly a century. Today, we're going to be talking about the deadliest tornado in Ohio history. The 1924 Lorraine Sandusky Tornado, here on Tornado Tales. Look, oh, that is scary. The truck is, oh my gosh. Holy smokes. What's happening, ladies and germs? This is the Packer Man, and welcome to today's edition of Tornado Tales. Where today we're going to be talking about the 1924 Lorraine Sandusky Tornado. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, the reason why we're going to be talking about this tornado is because I had a curiosity about what was the deadliest tornado in Ohio's history, considering that I'm from Ohio. I didn't even know that this tornado existed, truth be told, before I started doing this show. It got, I mean, when I started doing this show, it got me thinking, what is the deadliest tornado in Ohio history? You know, a lot of people might point to the 1974 Xenia F5 tornado, killed over 30 people, and was the deadliest tornado of the 74 super outbreak. A lot of people might point to the Niles tornado, the Niles F5, that struck Niles, Ohio, and basically wiped Wheatland, Pennsylvania off the face of the map. But that one only killed about 20 people. No, this tornado that we're going to be talking about actually killed more people than the Xenia and Niles tornadoes combined. Yeah. And for this particular event, we have to go all the way back to June the 28th, 1924. 1924. This means that the Lorraine Sandusky tornado predates the Tri-State tornado by almost a year. Think about that for a second. The deadliest tornado in Ohio history took place nearly a century ago now. It's pretty crazy to think about. Now, this might be a little bit of a shorter episode than what you've been used to because there really isn't a whole lot of information regarding this tornado, unfortunately. But what we do know is that the storm's path was 52 miles moving east-northeast with half the path over Lake Erie. So, it started west of Sandusky, Ohio and traveled over Lake Erie as a water spout. And then eventually struck back on land and struck the town of Lorraine. There were many towns that were impacted by this tornado. Whitmore, Castalia, Sandusky, and actually passed 1,000 feet north of the Weather Bureau office. Huron, Lorraine, Sheffield, Avon, and West Dover. However, this is called the Lorraine Sandusky Tornado for a reason. 
And it's because all of the fatalities that occurred with this tornado happened in the towns of Sandusky and Lorraine. Hence why it's called the Lorraine Sandusky Tornado. Witnesses say that it was estimated to be around half a mile wide. And it was traveling at an estimated speed of 50 miles per hour. That's a fast moving storm. Basically that's faster than a lot of cars could travel even back in that day. So, <laughs> yeah. And of course this is before weather radar or even tornado warnings were even a concept. I mean, tornado warnings or even severe thunderstorm warnings weren't even a thing until like the late 40s, mid 50s. I mean, that's how crazy this is. To have to go back to a time where, yeah, no, any kind of weather radar whatsoever wasn't even an idea at the time. You know, tornado warnings weren't a thing. Severe thunderstorm warnings weren't a thing. Like, this is just craziness. Look at this cat. Also, this tornado... It's a tornado that doesn't have any official rating to it because it happened before uh, record-keeping was officially started to be kept in 1950. However, um, many tornado experts... Uh, have stated that this is widely regarded as an F4 tornado. And as we all know, F4 and above is considered a violent tornado. So, needless to say, this was an exceptionally powerful storm. On that day, June the 28th, 1924, there was a low pressure system that moved in from Iowa towards Michigan and Ontario. Temperatures were in the lower 80s across most of northern Ohio, which is typical for late June. The tornado formed over the Sandusky Bay during the late afternoon hours and hit the city of Sandusky where it killed eight and destroyed 100 homes and 25 businesses. So I think it's pretty fortunate that only eight people were killed in the city of Sandusky. Then it moved east over Lake Erie for several miles and moved as a water spout. And then the tornado struck the town of Lorraine just west of Cleveland where greater than 500 houses were destroyed and 1,000 others were damaged in addition to many businesses in the downtown area. 72 people, at least, were killed in Lorraine, including 15 people inside a collapsed theater and eight others inside the bathhouse located where the tornado came on shore. I mean, imagine that. You're on the beach, just chilling, trying to get some sun, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes this giant ass uh, water spout coming your way. And I can only imagine what was going through the beachgoers minds when that thing started heading their way. I can only imagine it was just complete and total chaos. And the only available shelter was this bathhouse and the tornado just completely destroyed it. And eight people were killed inside that uh, bathhouse. And this tornado still ranks among the deadliest in United States history. Now, there are, uncertain, there are uncertainties as to whether or not the Sandusky Lorraine tornado was a single tornado event due to the 25 mile path of the storm across Lake Erie between Sandusky and Lorraine. However, there were many eyewitnesses that reported a single storm crossing the lake before coming on shore again in Lorraine so I mean all of that tells you that this was pretty much one singular tornado and it stayed on the ground well technically on the ground since it did travel across water at some point for a large majority of its uh, travel across northern Ohio 85 people were killed in this tornado 300 total injuries 1,625 buildings were either damaged or destroyed and it caused more than 12 million dollars in damage. Now bear in mind this is 1920 currency. Apparently by today's currency it'd be well over 1 billion dollars in damage. That's pretty insane to say the least. And thus ends the tale of the 1924 Lorraine Sandusky Tornado. Like I said, pretty short little 
episode today because there were, isn't really a whole lot of information on this tornado uh, other than the fact that it was the deadliest tornado and remains the deadliest tornado in Ohio's entire recorded history. Which is absolutely insane considering the fact that when you ask people what the most powerful and deadliest tornado in Ohio's history is, many are going to point to the Xenia tornado. And that's not the case. I mean, this is a very obscure tornado. But, be that as it may, it's still the deadliest ever recorded in Ohio's history. And, like I said, I never knew this tornado existed before I started doing this show. So, it's pretty crazy to think about, to say the least. But that's going to do it for this edition of Tornado Tales. Uh, next time... For the next episode of Tornado Tales, we're not going to go as far back in history. In fact, this is going to be the most, the next episode is going to cover the most recent tornado that we've covered on this show thus far. The 2021 Western Kentucky EF4 tornado. The one that took place while we were in the middle of Christmas season. It has become one of the most infamous tornadoes in recent history because of a certain lawsuit that is still ongoing to this day as a result of this twister. But that'll be next time. But thank you very much for watching this edition of Tornado Tales. And until next time, this is the Packer Man signing out. See you later. What's happening ladies and germs? Thank you for watching tonight's video. If you're interested in sponsoring the channel, there is a link to my Patreon down in the description box below. Otherwise, hit like and subscribe if you want to continue watching great content like you saw today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, this is the Packer Man, signing out.